<laughs> what? What are you that doing? Was crazy. Shh, man. Don't you know who's sitting over there? Who? Me uh, uh, Somebody from Dancing with the Stars. No. Uh, from uh, You Must Be Smarter Than a Fifth Grader. No, it's Darnell Diggins from the New Orleans Saints, man. Oh, See? very cool. Football. Yeah, well, what, what are you doing? Uh, I appreciate, you know, you came in, you came yeah. back, you know, <laughs> yes. Tom was, you know, it's nice to meet you. Yes. I've never, you know, never met like a, a, a football hero like no. this this close before. Yeah. But Tom told me about this organization you got going on called, what, it, Maleness to Mel Manhood? Maleness to Manhood is my foundation. I started back in 2005 when I was with the Baltimore Ravens. I'm my fault with the New York Giants. I've been with the Giants, the Ravens, the Browns, and the Saints. and been able to do different things. There's nobody there teams. that I'm happy with, bro. No, no, I'm I, I was it. not, no. I played with all the enemies, <laughs> okay. you know. The Steelers, we love the Steelers, but they just didn't pay the bills. Uh, so I've been able to start my organization back in all the other places, and I'm starting to do stuff back here in Pittsburgh. So what is this, some kind of mentoring program? Yes, we deal with troubled youth, dealing with, you know, educating them through education. Hi, Mr. Wiley. Do you know what today is? It's Thursday. Well, yes, it's Thursday, but that's not it. It's a new year. That's true, too, but that's not it either. I've been working here for three months. Congratulations. Let's celebrate. <laughs> you can start by getting me a cup of coffee. Oh, I can't do that. I don't work here anymore. Thanks for watching His Place. You know that every time that you watch His Place, you're helping us because you're watching the program, you're praying for us, but you know there's something else you can do? When you give a gift of $37 or more, what you do is you help His Place to stay on the air. But more than that, what you do is you touch lives around the world. Because what happens is your gift of $37 or more will send you a 12-ounce package of Hope Coffee and a His Place mug. So that way you can have the coffee and you can have the mug. The coffee is grown by farmers that used to grow coca for cocaine. And it also helps to sustain the families there and take care of the people there. It also, the profits from the coffee go to help abandoned and abused children around the world to help them become who God wants for them to be, to give them a hope and a future. So would you go to His Place TV today and give your very best gift of $37 or more, and we'll send you as our gift, Hope Coffee. You are looking at a living unborn baby only 10 weeks after conception. Abortion stops a beating heart. I cannot believe Donald Dinkins is here. You know what? I should offer him one of my pastries. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a professional athlete is going to enjoy your pastries. Well, maybe. Oh, 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 maybe I can make him a protein smoothie. I'll never have to make a protein smoothie. Uh-huh. Well, maybe, maybe he'll, he'll take both. You know, it's a coffee shop. He might want some coffee. Well, you know, I've been working here for three months, so... Uh, yeah, that's great. 
And if he did want coffee, he'd probably drink decaf. Exactly. Uh, like I was saying, I've been working here for three months, so I think it's time that, that you do not make a coffee for a person like Darnell Dinkins, as famous as he is. So, you know. Yeah, or hot chocolate. Great, None yeah. of that either. Right, because I don't think he's going to be wanting any hot chocolate uh -uh. either. You know, matter of fact, I need to go over there and see exactly what he might want. Maybe see if I can, YouTubers would know that I've talked to Darnell Dinkins. So let me, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you need help. Uh oh, Mr. Dinkins, hey. sir. How's it going, I'm just man? so happy to be here to meet you. Finally meet you. I've heard a lot about you. Oh, uh, maybe you've heard of me. I'm Chef Marcus. Mm -mm -mm. So, so maybe not. Customer. Customer. Uh, yeah, but uh, so what do you think of my moves? You know, you really think good, the NFL man. be it's interested good. in me? You know, I, I used to always want to be. Well, I always do want to be a chef, but just yes. in case that doesn't work, maybe I can. You know, you have a little career. Customer. Oh, 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 oh but what? Is there anything I can get you? No, I'm Maybe. good. I'm good. A couple more moves will be good. Sure, you, oh, you, I can do that. Maybe a protein smoothie? No, no I'm good. You, all right. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. He's excited. He's yeah, excited. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, wrong with you're that. the big NFL guy. No, you know, it's, no one, it's, no it's good. You know what? It, it's, it's so cool that, that you're doing this. You know, this whole maleness the man had given back. Because, you know, there's a lot of guys, and, and I don't blame them. I, I mean, they, they came from rough neighborhoods. They came from poor homes. They came from broken homes, whatever. And they and they make it big in the NFL, the NBA, the, you know, the Major League Baseball, whatever. And, and they don't turn back. They, they keep going. They, they get married. They raise their kids out in some fine place, take care of them and things like that. Because, you know, they left that behind. Exactly. Uh, and I don't blame them for that. But yeah. you're giving back. You know, one thing I see is that growing up, you hear about the guys who don't do. You see the guys who kind of get into situations, and you hear about it all day long. I wanted to be that guy who could kind of be a provider and give her back to the communities because there's too many situations where you see guys and you hear all these horror stories, but you never really hear about the guys who are doing the positive things. Mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of be different. Socialization, I think, is key in how we are raised. And you show kids that it's not just about being an athlete and running around and, and doing things in, in, on a football field, but it's about how you give back, how, how you take the blessings and, and being a good steward of what God has given you and help others who are less fortunate. So I think through educating people about, you know, jobs, business, I think educating kids about what it actually entails to be an athlete. It's not just about playing on a video game and playing. It's about a, a process and a preparation that goes hand in hand. It's about teaching yourself about wellness and, and health and how you can teach your body and structure your body to be great. So all these three components that, that can be incorporated through education. I think that is vital for guys who kids kind of idolize and say, you know, I could do more than just run around on the field or get money or just provide for my family. Now, there's an extreme dynamic when you're trying to structure between your family and, and, and peers. But I think that the more guys who give back, the better off people will be and the more athletes will be understood. Uh, I've, I've, I've worked in the inner city just a little bit with yes. some of my friends, uh, Greg Green and a couple other uh, local pastors. And, and there were there were a couple dynamics that I noticed with the young men. One or two things were going on. Either they were real pessimistic about their future. Yes. They didn't think they were going to live past 18, 19, 20 yeah. years old. Or they thought they were going to be the star athlete. Yeah. And that was it. And there was there was nothing else in between. They, they didn't know anything else in between, exactly. it seemed like. And I think with me, what God has done, I've been able to become successful, but it was through failure. I was that kid who people said, this is going to happen and that's going to happen. But when adversity hit, I tell kids, consider joy the various trials of life for when your faith is tested. It truly produced patience in me. And I think not enough people prepare for the, the situations that are harsh. Not enough parents want to tell their kids about failure and how to accept it. And I think through my foundation, Maleness to Manhood, we incorporate all those things and, and, and embody and encompass all those things through seminars we have, through, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, you know, speakings. We tell kids about how to prepare for if you fail tests, if you fail things. I had to take the SAT four times because I knew that if I didn't pass, I wouldn't have had an opportunity. Mm -hmm. I didn't have an athlete coming back and saying, well, these are the things that can happen. Mm -hmm. I had to do it through hard work and perseverance. Yeah, when you're talking about education, I mean, one of, one of the things, and, and once again, I work with the hardest of the hard. Yeah. It's not every kid that's out there, but exactly. I work with the hardest of the hard. And these kids are like, listen, you know what, why do I need school? Yeah. You know, if, if, I, if I sell so many drugs or I do this, I'm going to make more money exactly. than God. Exactly. You know, if, if I do that, I don't need school. Yeah, how, do you get, how do you get them to believe that, you know what, education is important? Because one thing I do, I go through a work day in the NFL. I tell them about... We're in the classroom six, seven hours a day. We only practice two times, two, two hours out the day. So education is vital in anything that you do. I went to the Wharton School of Business, and, and once God started to provide for me, 
through you know football. I started you know making sure that I did other things, and I went to the Warren School of Business and found that through education, somebody is making this cup, somebody's making this table, and making a killing because they understand the business side of it, and they're using their education as a tool. And through socialization, through throwing, showing kids other things that can happen in your in your life, you don't have to be an oh, entertainer. Joe, my wonderful, kind, funny friend, Joe. I just want to thank you for being so kind to me these past three months. You've made me feel so welcomed here, and I won't forget any of the memories we've had, you know, unloading the truck, stacking boxes, checking inventory, and signing invoices. We've made some great memories, haven't we? Hey, Joe. Joe. Oh, whoa, whoa, sorry. Uh, were you talking to me? I, I didn't hear a word you said. I was listening to drive-by truckers. Oh, they're awesome, man. Well, cool. What I was telling you was that I was... Hey, hey, you dancing to my music or what? I can't hear your music. No. Oh, now Diggins is here, right? Oh, you mean from the Super Bowl champs to Saints? Yeah. No yeah, way, yeah, man. Yeah, that's oh, him. Oh, oh, no. It's the tight ends carry the ball, and they try to score touchdowns, you know, and touchdowns are worth six points. You know, I know girls can't understand, so, you know, I'm sorry. All right, I'm just a girl who won't be working here much longer. I mean, no, I, I wonder if I can go say hi to him. What yeah, do you think? Yeah, he's I did. He's a real nice guy. Let me check out. Okay, not bad, you know, for a guy your age. Yeah, real funny, buddy. Yeah. Well, come on, let me introduce you. Oh, you sure? Oh, yeah, go. Cool. Tell you. His place, his place, his place. Thanks for watching His Place. You know that every time that you watch His Place, you're helping us because you're watching the program, you're praying for us, but you know there's something else you can do? When you give a gift of $37 or more, what you do is you help his place to stay on the air. But more than that, what you do is you touch lives around the world. Because what happens is your gift of $37 or more will send you a 12 ounce package of Hope Coffee and a His Place mug. So that way you can have the coffee and you can have the mug. The coffee is grown by farmers that used to grow coca for cocaine. And it also helps to sustain the families there and take care of the people there. And also, the profits from the coffee go to help abandoned and abused children around the world to help them become who God wants for them to be, to give them a hope and a future. So would you go to His Place TV today and give your very best gift of $37 or more, and we'll send you as our gift, Hope Coffee. Our patient load is 2-10 plus 5, including a critically ill infant going for cardiac surgery. Captain Barb Kippens has been a registered nurse for over 10 years, but in all her years caring for patients, she never imagined she'd be taking it to this level. I'm a flight nurse in the Air Force Reserve. Our mission, to save lives. Whether it's transporting injured soldiers or assisting a civilian in need of critical care, we're ready. I know being a flight nurse is a part-time job, but it's a full-time experience. And it's one of many exciting careers in the Air Force Reserve. Call 800-257-1212. Air Force Reserve, above and beyond. Hi, everyone. It's me, Chef Marcus. Mm -mm -mm. There is a special guest in the cafe today, and, you know, he might be making a special guest appear, so I might as well tell you. It's Darnell Dinkins. Yeah, you know him. Yes, it, I talk, grew up in Pittsburgh, tight end for the New Orleans Saints. And in honor of him being here today, I'm going to prepare some special tailgate food. You know what I'm Chef, mm -mm -mm, may I say a few words? Yes, my assistant Sam may say a few words. You know, we understand that women don't really know too much about football and everything. So we, as long as it's a few, we'll understand that it's a few. That's okay. Hmm. I just want to say thank you for watching me these past three months. And it's been a pleasure seeing you all. And I'll miss each and every one of you. I know goodbyes are sad and hard wait, sometimes. Wait, wait, hold on, wait, wait. Goodbye? Wait, wait, wait. Was Darnell leaving? Did you uh -huh. find out Darnell was leaving? You know, what, matter of fact, I need to check because YouTubers, I'll be right back because I, we can't have him not be on the show and tape something. So, you know, Sam, I, need, I appreciate you letting me know. Uh, I'm going to go watch the door. You make sure you cover. Let me know over the airwaves that we can't miss this. So, girl, I appreciate you. What would I do without you? Yeah. <laughs> what will you do?
great stuff and it is absolutely needed but how do you practically play it out i mean what what happens when when you do you know one of these events well one of our events mostly are just to in, incorporate i mean comfort oh, compass empower families we want to teach them through different programs like we are having a health and wellness seminar coming up in may how mark is behind it university of pittsburgh won't have a two-day seminar bring in entertainers athletes talk about obesity talk about free health screenings talk about all these different things that you can do to prepare yourself through education stopping you know young heart attacks so in our events i hope for you to walk away with some some more things that can help you you know, throughout your career, throughout your life. You know, the city of Pittsburgh is behind us. So every month with the, throughout the Hill District, Homewood, having, you know, free health screenings and dances that kind of keep people just, you know, healthy. So whether it's, you know, a, a health and wellness, you know, seminar, whether it's a free football camp, it's about en encompassing families and trying to empower them, whether it's education, health, wellness, anything that we can to help you walk away with something. Yeah, what are people's response to this? I mean, you've done a number of these, right? Yeah, we've done a number, a number of football camps where we have like football camp and SAT prep course at the same time with, with a job ready in the seminar at the same time. So trying to embody all these different things because even though it's maleness to manhood, it's about embracing families. It's about being able to you know teach people each and every day on how they can get better in some aspect of their life. So not to say that I have all the answers, but I've walked through a lot of different things you know, through the pros, and I think that all these horror stories that you hear about guys not doing, I'm trying to be a guy that is doing and giving back and providing through education. See, that, that's the key. You don't have to have all the answers. No. You just need to have the answers that you have. Absolutely. You share with somebody else. The Absolutely. stuff that you've succeeded in. I mean, you, you, you've had your failures. You, you had your, if I'm hearing you right, yes. you've had your failures, you had your problems, but you overcame them. Yes. And you can give those to somebody else and it makes a difference. And I continue to have my failures. And that's the best thing about my foundation. I talk, when I have motivational speakings, myself, I bring in guys like Lamar Rucker, you know, bringing Darren Sharpers and let them, you know, talk about their experiences. People and youth who are troubled. I went to the Vision Quest and had a great, great, just embracing moment with the kids that their hard criminals, so called by society, mm -hmm. were crying at the end of it because they understood the dynamic of. This guy went from nothing to something. This guy was had doors shut in his face. People talked about him, yet and still, he kept his focus and his faith in God and was able to sustain. And that's what this foundation is about, em 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 empowering families and youth through education. Is there is there a particular kid or a family that, that you remember from the various times that you, you've done this that's like, you know what, that kid was why I did it, or this I, family is why I did I it. I think why I really wanted to get into helping youth and helping families, because when I was doing juvenile probation, I was a family counselor at the same time. And going into homes with sexual abuse and no lights, all these different things, I thought my life was over because I wasn't playing football. And I said if I ever got the opportunity again, I wanted to be an athlete who helped. I wanted to be an athlete who people could come up and talk to and not be a guy who was seen as this athlete. You don't want to even sign an autograph. And those things and the things that God has allowed to happen in my life, has resonated over what I do now. So the toy drafts and the Thanksgiving dinner giveaways and the health seminars and the dessert tastings and all these different things to kind of just help families out and give them a get them a little cut, a little aspect of my life and how I you know can give back to others. And it's so cool I, what you just said that you you had this you had this bad time in your life and you yes. thought it meant nothing. You yes. thought it was like your life was over, but God used that time yeah, absolutely to to break your heart so you would be ready when he promoted you into the NFL to say, okay, now you're a success. Now keep your promise. I showed you what needs to be done. Exactly. And, and my, my Valley moment was a, only my Valley moment for a short time, but the mountain moment was that much better because I remember it never forgot what God has brought me through. Sam, I heard you talking. You're going to be leaving his place? Well, if you are, you're going to give me a cup of coffee. Oh, Mr. Wiley, I knew you'd care. <laughs> what, what are you doing? Well, I figured you'd want to hear what happened. So, I made a deal with my dad about working here for a little bit. I told him I'd try it. I did, and it didn't work out. So, I'm going to move on. Move on? To what? To what? You know, move on. What's your plans? I have a lot of plans. I'm going to sleep in and hang out with my friends, shop, travel, just have fun. Fun? You need to do something with your life. Find your purpose. That's what makes life worthwhile. I understand that, but I just want to enjoy life first. I'm young. I'm not that young. 
Well, I can't believe I said that. Well, I'm younger than Marcus. He's not a very good example. It's been great knowing you, Mr. Wiley. Mm -hmm. You've been a really great customer and always one of my favorites. Oh, come here. I'm pretty sure that if I don't make it as a chef, I'll definitely make it as a football player, especially once the NFL sees my moves, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're going to walk on and they're going to sign you a big contract. Yeah, yeah right. it could happen. Yeah, right. You get a better chance of me having a fleet of trucks than being a mogul. Yeah, yeah. Good. Not as likely. Well, a better chance than you being some big time football <sighs> star. Okay, don't believe me. Don't believe me, but somebody will. You'll see. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. One day we will see. Hey, hey. I heard you talking with Walt. What? You're going to be leaving? So you're going to lecture me now, huh? No, 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 no. Far be it from me to lecture you about leaving. I, I say seize the day, take some time off, sow your oats, enjoy life, <laughs> sleep in, live at home with your parents. They got food in the fridge and a car with gas in it. <laughs> Amen. You have a good point, but aren't you in trouble with the IRS? That reporter has it out for me, and it's a total misunderstanding, okay? Mm. Besides, does Tim know that you're leaving? Well, no, but I left a note on his desk for him. Oh, he should like that. <laughs> you know, if you ever need anything, right across the street over shenanigans, come in. You can pick up a couple hours here and there, make a few extra bucks if you need it. Not a problem. Thanks, but I hope I don't ever have to do that. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Crazy there... woman. For you to reach out to families this way, for you to go through life the way that you did, was there, when you were growing up, who, who was your guiding light? Who was your, you know, that, that center that kept you focused? You know, it's funny, Melness and Manhood is talking about men nowadays, how we don't have that figurehead. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Satan has done a good job of taking that figurehead out. So I didn't grow up with a father like everybody would want to. But God has a way of putting the right people in your, in your place and in your life at the right time. And there was a past, my pastor Neville Brooks mm -hmm. and Robert Thornton, my brother-in-law. These guys have been profound in my development as a man. You know, in the inner city, you see it's about getting women, it's about notoriety, mm -hmm. but nobody really tell you how to be a man, how to set boundaries in your life, how to sustain and how to deal with situations that, that happen. And Rob Thornton, you know, my brother-in-law, he's a he's a you know um, elder at the church, he's a pastor, he was a pastor over in Iraq when he served over mm -hmm. there. And this guy's just all in all, one of the greatest guys that I've met because he don't just talk the talk, he walks a walk mm -hmm. in his daily life and he holds me accountable mm -hmm. when I am wrong, which is tough when you got somebody who Super Bowl champion, got a ring, <laughs> all these things, you know, people don't want to tell you, hey, that's not right sometimes. And he'll be the first to say, hey, you know what, this isn't right. I got a, um, elder, I mean, Pastor Neville Brooks has been just, he, wherever I am at, if I have an issue, he'll drive there, he'll come there and say, son, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And these two guys, along with a bunch of my other buddies, Dennis Biggs, you know, all these other guys, Jeff Benson, all these other guys have played pr profound roles in my life that's really been helpful mm -hmm. to that time. Sometimes as guys, we don't believe in opening up. We don't believe in talking. Mm -hmm. But I always know I could go to Rob or Pastor Neville, and these guys are always there for me. What, what are the character traits in these guys that – uh, I'm, I'm assuming that you're taking those same character traits and when you talk to just young men, when you're there uh, at Vision Quest talking yeah. to these guys, w what are the things that you say, hey, you know what, these are the things that I learned, these are the character traits that I needed that you need to make Cons a difference? Consistency is one. If you ask anybody, when you're consistent, you know, it, it's a hab it's habit for me. Like, this is your habit. I'm consistent with my behavior in good times in bad times and good places and bad places and these guys are consistent every way i see them i've take we've been out you know here there and they're always consistent i'll know what kind of pastor my pastor isn't somebody who's going to talk one way and act another mm -hmm. and he's he leads by example mm -hmm. and that's what we really need nowadays we don't need people just sounding good but mm -hmm. showing you know it, it's not just a religion but your relationship mm -hmm. And those are things that they just embody to me. Something that just really wasn't there. And sports is a fast-paced world. Everybody's telling you how great you are, stroking your ego. But to have people who can make you come back down to earth is what you need. And I'm thankful. Without these guys in my life, I don't know where I would be right now. Talking about that, you're, you're retired now? Yes. So how does that feel? I mean, uh, you know. 
true. If you ask me now, I would say I'm a guy in transition. You yeah. know, I go from nine years of playing to now I'm kind of working on my own indoor playhouse in Cleveland called Bounce City. Me and Josh Cribs do real estate here, project investors, the hard money lending company, TFT. Uh, you know, I'm a dad. All these different things. I'm in transition because my life last year, this time, was different. We're under, going for a Super Bowl run. Now I'm, you know, dropping kids off at basketball practice, you know. <laughs> so it's, it's in transition, and it takes some time. But if, a lot of athletes has issues because if you go from high school being praised, college being praised, pros being praised, and now you stop playing, who are you? And I think me going the opposite way from – failing, having to work, and then going to the pros, I was able to kind of get a, a, a little chunk of what real life is like. I have to go now. It's been great getting to know all of you, and I'm surely going to miss you and never forget you, but I hope you don't forget me either. Okay, look, I know I was hard on you about the whole football thing, but if you hang around for a little bit, I'll, I'll show you some things. Just because Darnell is here. Well, yeah. <laughs> Darnell Dickens. Tight end. Used to play for the Giants, Ravens, um, Giants, the Ravens, the Saints, and Browns. And is currently an unrestricted free agent. 25 receptions, 228 receiving yards, three touchdowns, oh, and one Super Bowl ring. Goodbye. It's been great getting to know all of you, and I hope I never have to work here again. No offense. Hey, did, I, did she just, like... Nah, nah, she, nah, nah. She, she's on tomorrow's schedule. No, she, no, 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 no. She quit. She's gone. She's out of here. No way. Yep. Wait, wait, wait. There's, wait, there's no way Tim knows. See? That's the beauty of it. Tim doesn't know. She left a note on his desk in, a, in the office. I'm going to stick around just to see the fireworks when Tim finds that note. What? <laughs> Listen, she had an agreement with her dad. Work here for three months. She did it. She's gone. She left to go enjoy life. I hope she does. It's not easy. Mm. It's not cracked up to be what all it is. See you guys See you, later. Wally. See you, Walt. Take care. Mr. Wally, don't touch me. <laughs> hey, you cracked me up, man. That means since she's <laughs> gone, you're going to need a new assistant for your big chef, Marcus Show. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, huh. you think so, huh? You think? Yeah, I mean, I'm not doing anything. I'm available. Oh, yeah. You know what? You probably have a better chance at getting signed with the NFL. Get out no We're doing way. your famous no mogul. I didn't know you skied. Yeah, man. Moguls? Yeah, moguls. Yeah. What is a mogul? <laughs> well, there's a whole not bunch of it. Hey, no, a mogul could be like a business tycoon. Mm -hmm. It's the, 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 the bumps on the ski here? slope. You can go down like that. You got to get good knees. Oh no, what's up with Sam? D Darnell, what do, you, what do you think? What's up with Sam? We, we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. You're going to have to tune in to the next His Place and find out. And by, way, by the way, if you want to find out more about Darnell and uh, his organization, go to darnelldinkins.com or you can check us out at hisplace.tv. We'll have all that information there for you as well. Remember to tune in to the next His Place. We've got another great show for you, another wonderful time. And uh, you can find out more about the coffee and more about Darnell at hisplace.tv. See you then.